Hey guys, so today I'll be talking about what it takes to become a professional engineer. Um, so I myself got my professional engineering designation in Alberta um, in February 2023. So I'll be talking it through mainly through the requirements um, if you do it through APEGA, um, which is the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Alberta. Um, and so depending on the province or territory that you do it with, the requirements could uh, differ slightly, but I think overall for um, most of the province and territories, the requirements are very similar. So this video should be pretty applicable to you. Um, and also I'm making this video as of 2023. So in the future, it's possible that the requirements could change. So make sure you just double check everything uh, before you submit your application. So the first step is making sure that you have a document that proves either you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. So that could be things like your Canadian passports, um, birth certificate, or your PR card, things like that. Um, so that's something that they'll ask you to submit. And then the next thing is your education. So ideally, you want to make sure you have a bachelor's in engineering um, that's accredited by the Canadian um, Engineering Accreditation Board, or CEAB for short. Um, and so if you have an undergrad degree that's accredited, that's going to make the process a lot smoother. But if you don't, for example, I know a lot of you guys, my viewers, um, are from out of the country. Maybe you did your bachelor's somewhere else, um, or maybe you don't have a bachelor's degree in engineering. Um, so if you do a master's of engineering in Canada or you have like a diploma, things like that, you're still eligible to become a professional engineer here in Canada. Um, but the thing is, when you submit your application, they're going to look at your degree um, and all the courses you've taken and try to match it up. Um, and it's very likely that they're going to require you to take some um, te technical exams. Um, and so depending on how far your degree is away from the Canadian undergrad um, engineering curriculum, uh, you could be required to take a lot of different technical exams or maybe just one. But ultimately, it just really depends on what degree you have. After that, you'll be required to take the National Professional Practice Exam or MPPE for short. Um, and so this exam is really about testing your knowledge of professionalism, law, and ethics. Um, and this is a multiple choice exam, so around 110 questions uh, long. So it requires about two and a half hours. Um, you probably don't need the full time. And this exam can be administered uh, through online. So I did it online and I just basically did it in my own home. Um, you need to have a webcam. So there's going to be a proctor who will be um, basically monitoring you and the exam I would say overall is not that hard um, you just want to make sure I, I took around two weeks to just read through all the material um, just give yourself enough time and making sure you read through the questions very carefully reading through all the answers carefully um, the questions itself is not super hard but Sometimes there, be, there could be um, two very similar answers and you just really need to choose the best one. And also, depending on which province or territory that you're writing the exam through, um, you may be, for example, in Alberta, you're only given four attempts. And if you fail on the fourth attempt, then you actually have to restart your whole application process again. Um, and so that's some, just something to keep in mind. And lastly, there's a $250 fee for writing the exam. So really, you want to make sure you pass it on the first try and just give yourself enough time to study through the material so you don't have to um, sit through the exam and pay the fee again. All right, the next step is a relatively simple step. It's just a declaration of character and reputation. So as engineers in Canada, the public is going to be trusting you with their safety. So the Board of Examiners require you to declare that you are a character, you're a person of good character and reputation. So declaring things like you don't have a criminal record, um, you haven't conducted any uh, unprofessional or negligent practices in the past. Uh, but if you did conduct any of those in the past, um, just making sure you're honest and explain the reasons behind that, it's still possible that they may allow you to become a professional engineer, but 
really that's going to be on a case by case basis based on what the um, board of examiners thinks and based on the things like severity, how long ago was that, things like that. The next step is the language. So as engineers working in Canada, um, you'll be mostly most likely speaking in English. And so if you have an undergraduate degree that was taught in English, then basically you can skip this part. But if you don't, um, then you want to make sure that you take the TOEFL exam and score 100 or more on it. And depending on, again, depending on the province or territory that you're trying to register through, um, they may allow different exams. But for the province of Alberta, they only require TOEFL. So make sure you take the TOEFL and not any other um, exams like IELTS or whatever. Just take the TOEFL and score 100 or more on it. For work experience wise, you want to make sure you have 48 months or four years of experience. And actually 12 months of that can be through um, co-ops or internships. So whatever work experience you've gathered through um, before you graduated. So that's actually what I did. I have um, actually I have more than 12 months of um, co-ops, but I can only count up to 12 months of that. And the remaining three, sorry, 12, yeah, 12 months or one year. Um, and the remaining three years, I've counted my post-graduation um, work experience. And so the time is actually only one part of that. The other part is making sure that your experiences meet the competencies as outlined required by the uh, whatever association you're trying to register through. So for a PEGA, that's 22 different competencies. Um, and you have to do a write-up for each of those competencies and basically explain how your experience um, give an example of how your experience meet those requirements. Um, so I can make it a separate video for that because that could be a very long topic. Um, and I'll give some tips at the end on how to prepare yourself for that. So the last part is paying the fee. Um, if you are already an engineer in training, the fee is just $325. And if you're not an engineer in training already, then the fee will be $500. So once you have submitted your applications, it could take anywhere from three to six months for it to get fully processed. I myself submitted it in June of 2022. Um, around November was November of 2022 was when all my supervisors basically uh, finished validating all my competencies um, and move on to the next stage for a PEGA to review it. Um, and so I didn't ultimately get my uh, professional engineering designation until February of 2022. So that's actually six months in total. Um, and again, this timeline could really depend on, um, for example, like the complexity of your application, how long it takes your supervisors to uh, validate everything, um, how busy the association is. So there's a lot of factors that could affect how long it takes, but um, I'll say maybe around six months in total is what you should expect. So some final tips I have for putting together your application. The first step is whether you're working as an intern right now or you're working uh, full time after graduation. Um, I would really recommend that you start keeping track of all the things you've done. So for example, I had a monthly sort of like a journal entry of all the things I did and I make sure I update that at the end of every month. Just looking back at my calendars of all the meetings, um, presentations, looking through my notes, keeping track of what I did. Um, and that was really helpful when it came to write about my competencies because I had already a list of everything that I've done. And it was really easy to just pick um, one example, um, elaborate a little bit more on it, and then um, just based, and that basically explain how I met the competency. And if you don't have a record of what you've done, it's going to be really difficult um, when it comes time to write about your competencies to just look back and say like for the past four or five years and just try to think about like what you've done actually, what you have done and what experiences actually allows you to meet those competencies. So that could be very hard if you don't have a record of what you've done already. Um, the second tip I would give is to make sure you're keeping in contact with your um, supervisors, so making sure you have their phone numbers, emails, um, LinkedIn, and whatnot. So they will get an email once you submit your application that they'll be required to verify your competencies, but sometimes they may forget to get really busy, things like that. So um, I personally had to like give my supervisors 
um, a few reminders, and it's possible that they may forget. And things like if you, for example, leave the company, or maybe they leave the company, then maybe that will be make it a little bit harder for you to get in contact with them. So making sure you have your phone numbers, emails, um, contact information, just making sure you're able to get in touch with them, because that will be really helpful in uh, speeding up your application process. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, let me know which video for, uh, you want me to make next, whether it's about the professional practice exam or how to write about your competencies and what they are. Um, I'll be getting back into making more YouTube videos. So if you have any other comments or, or suggestions, leave them in the comments below, or you can contact me through my Instagram at Quan underscore FVNG. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, hope to see you guys on the next one.